Good evening everyone, it's the 28th of the 1st, 2014. Okay, so we've finally seen BOM issue a, um, a tropical low advice, which is likely to become a tropical cyclone, and the first one to impact Queensland since um, Yazi in 2011. Well, this one's um, significantly weaker. Obviously a Cat 1, maybe a Cat 2, it could it could just fire up a little bit more as it nears the coast. I'd like to point out a few things regarding this system that um, I'd like people not to become complacent with. And that is heavy rain, flooding and strong winds. So you can see the track map there that they've issued today. This is the latest guidance that the, the um, Bureau of Meteorology have issued with a landfall there sometime around about um, or Thursday night possibly very early Friday morning. This will change, no doubt, in time. Um, as cyclones are quite unpredictable, it could it could sweep further south or it could head further north. We'll just have to keep an eye on that. Okay, um, everyone's been talking about the the strong winds associated, you know, I've noticed in comments on HSC that, um, yeah, we're already feeling it. We're actually just feeling a high pressure ridge which is is blowing strong southeasterly winds up along the Queensland coast at the moment, and obviously bringing heavy squally showers as well. That doesn't have anything to do with the um, tropical low out here in the Coral Sea. That's just simply a high pressure ridge. While there is a tightening in the pressures between the two of them, um, it's still it's still not um, any direct effect of the cyclone as yet, or or low become a cyclone yet. Those are the surface winds. You can see them pushing in there from the um, southeast, right along the Queensland coast. The next chart is 850 winds at about 5,000 feet. These winds carry the um, showers that you you are experiencing up there. They're also coming in around here in the southeast coast, a lot more more gentler as well, and, and lighter and a little bit more isolated. But definitely along from about Mackay North. They're ripping in from the southeast there, these showers, so you can see that. You can also see the centre of the um, tropical low up here in the Coral Sea. You can see the wind starting to rotate around the northern side. It's a little bit elongated at the moment, but um, give it time and it'll start to take a little bit more shape as it nears the coast. Alright, so that's the current visible satellite image. Uh, it's still very messy out here. Obviously, there's there's no real formation in satellite satellite imagery as such, but it is there. There's a low pressure region there, and there's a lot of um, convection around it. You can also see that the these showers being cranked onto the um, North Queensland coast from the southeast through this way like that. Now, winds. Okay, so it you know category one system. Yeah, it won't be much. Well, the winds will be enough to possibly be damaging. Um, 100, 110, might even say 120k gusts. And it all depends on what it does as it nears the coast, whether it increases in speed. Now, these are the wind uh, shading chart. This is the chart at the surface of wind gusts at 7 a.m. on Thursday morning. You can see the center of the low, or TC, out here, um, northeast of Cairns. And the big wind swathe associated with it as that high pressure ridge to the south of the, of the country and the low, low pressure slash cyclone up here creates a very, very tight pressure gradient on the southeastern side. So you get these very, very strong winds well ahead of the system. Obviously that's 7am um, Thursday morning. As we scroll forward to 4pm um, Thursday afternoon, you can see that the winds also extend down here towards the south, towards Mackay, and we've got 50 knot winds there, so 100k an hour winds just offshore from Mackay at the surface, and these could get carried onto the surface quite easily, especially with squally showers that come through, and you know, they pick the winds up quite significantly as they hit. The rest of the coast between Cairns and Townsville you're looking at, at 40 knots, so 80k an hour Thursday afternoon. By Friday morning, the the low slash cyclone is very very close to either Cairns or Townsville. Okay, on this model, on the GFS model, it's positioning it to be between the two cities. 
okay so but my, what I'm trying to get the point across here is there's still very very strong winds along the coast anywhere from just south of Mackay up towards Townsville and obviously Cairns would get them just a little bit earlier before the low slips or wherever it goes to but the thing I'm focusing on here are the strong winds the 50 knot winds the gusts 100 K 110 you know you get some more you get up around 120 K gusts from this thing and um, before you know it, you'll have a few trees coming down and a few, maybe a few power lines, um, you know, coming down as well, causing a few issues, power outages. Um, any loose items need to be put away and secure in these type of winds. As we scroll forward on the GFS timeline, uh, this particular model has a crossing between Townsville and Cairns, fairly close to Townsville, at 10 a.m. Friday. And again, you can see the winds extending inland there towards Charters Towers uh, at 100 k an hour gusts at the surface. So there's quite significant winds even extending a fair way inland as the, as the low slash cyclone tracks inland. Some strong winds down here around about Mackay as well. So that's winds, all right? It's still going to give you guys up there a fair blow. And it's not just going to be confined to the eye or the center of the low slash cyclone it will extend a long way south due to the high pressure ridging the tightening of the pressure gradients between the low and the high in the south of the country and um, yeah I thought I'd really focus on those because people have seen it as issued as a cat one on landfall as, as crossing there oh it's not going to be too bad well they can pack a punch and um, they can be dangerous and cause issues and damage the next thing I'd like to focus on, sorry guys, I'm just shooting this on my iPhone tonight, doing a real quick one, um, is rainfall. Um, a significant amount of rainfall is being forecast by the Waddle model on BOM. Th this comprises of eight computer models put together, so it's a, a consensus of, of many different computer models to give a very good, r and, and very, well, it's actually quite accurate, I was going to say very accurate, but you just never know with these things. Um, but it has been sticking these very high rainfall forecast totals from um, just south of Mackay up to Cairns, uh, where the totals for the system, let's say three to four days, could exceed 400 millimetres. And the bomb have just issued um, the, the flood warnings for coastal rivers north, and they have mentioned this as well. Um, Rainfall totals of 1 to 200 possible daily totals from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and also local falls of up to 400 mils a day, okay? Um, that will cause issues, that will cause flood issues up there. Um, I spoke to people today about the Bruce Highway being cut. If these rainfall totals occur, which is looking likely, then yeah. The good old Bruce Highway is going to go underwater and be cut for a couple of days, or depending on depending on how much water falls inland further as well. Uh, this is coupled with abnormally high tides, king summer tides, um, 6.5 metres at Mackay, 4 metres at Townsville. I don't know what Kansas is like, but again, spoken to people up there today, and there's water um, lapping the grates in the um, drain drainage systems up there. So you go and dump 400 mils of rain that has to get away quickly through streets on a king tide like that and um, you're going to end up with local flash flooding, street flooding, low-lying area, you know, coastal inundation for low-lying areas. So it's going to be something that I really want you guys to keep an eye out on and be aware of. Um, you know, roads that are have flash flooding on them. I don't want to be watching the news on Friday night and seeing Swiftwater Rescues pulling people off rooftops because you should know better by now. You live up there, you experience it, and we are pushing the safety message for that reason. So very big high rainfall tails. The other exciting news is for half of the Queensland, half of the northern half of Queensland, is that inland areas, drought stricken inland areas, that are experiencing the worst drought in a hundred years. Some of these guys haven't had rain out here for 22 months. That's two years. Don't worry about XTC Oswald when it went down the coast. It didn't get them out there. And um, <clears throat> as you've seen with their recent campaign, all through cent uh, all through um, well parts of New South Wales and Queensland is just dirt at the moment. There's no 
there's no grass whatsoever. Um, you know, up to 100 mils, 50 to 100 mils forecast in these areas for totals over the next eight days as that system tracks inland. Fantastic news. Jeez, I hope it comes off. The only other thing I wish the system did was came in and went straight down the guts like that and gave everyone a drink. But unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's going to happen at this stage. It's just confined to the northern half of Queensland. Sorry, guys, down here, our Aussie helpers. Keep up the great work, guys. $60,000 donated from you, our fans, from HSC through our campaign. That's awesome. These guys can now go out and help the farmers, um, you know, deliver hay, water, diesel, offer them packs of food and general groceries and moral support. You know, these guys go out there and they visit visit the farmers personally and um, speak to them directly and um, it's all hands on out there, which is great. I've also noticed too, there has been a number of sites open up since our campaign. These are genuine uh, everyday you and I people creating Facebook pages and doing charity drives. They have contacted Aussie helpers out here at Charleville and they've been given the go ahead. They will do these charities um, in their own backyards or businesses or, or small towns and communities um, and then they will then transfer the money over to, um, to Aussie helpers and um, you know it's all based on trust so I, I would um, I'd, um, it'd be great to see everyone do the right thing. Alright guys that's enough from me tonight. It was supposed to be quick, ends up being 11 minutes long. Again we've got a tropical low Sitting out here northeast of Cairns, it's a fair way off yet, but it is going to move southwest quite quickly. Come in as a, as, a, as a tropical low and then likely turn into a cyclone. It may turn into a cyclone early within the next 24 hours. There are forecasts suggesting that. It's coming in as a Cat 1. I've got a gut feeling it's going to go to a Cat 2. Uh, still in favourable conditions. And the, the longer it takes to get to the coastline, the longer it's got to take to develop into something more significant than a Cat 1. And uh, that's just a little gut feeling I've got as a Cat 2. Still, watch out for damaging winds, heavy rainfall, stay out of the floodwaters and um, prepare now. We will keep monitoring this system, issuing bomb warnings, our own takes, and I'll do another video update in probably two nights time or something as it nears. Keep an eye out for Oz Cyclone Chasers forecast videos. They are fantastic. We liaise with Trav Nitzo and the guys up there behind the scenes at Facebook. Talk to them, say what's doing guys. We put throw our two cents worth in and they do it as well. Um, they are very experienced guys with forecasting. Some of the best in this country. Okay guys, thank you for watching and good luck and stay safe.